<laughs> okay. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Hello, brothers and sisters. Church of the Living God, hello. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I, I had just uh, started um, speaking, and I realized that I hadn't turned on the camera. <laughs> So, <laughs> good thing I didn't didn't start. Um, hello, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, good morning. Thank you so much for your prayers, brethren. Thank you so much for your prayers. Remember, prayer moves mountains. Prayer, along with the sword of the Spirit, is the strongest weapon we have. A direct line of communication with our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we covet your prayers more than anything. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you, brethren, for all that you have done for us, for your prayers. Please keep praying for us uh, as we pray for so many of you. Please keep us in your prayers and thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We are forever your servants. Well, our brother, our best friend, is going to be joining us here today. It's now 9.28 my time in the morning, 9.28 a.m. Um, he has left from his work to come to spend a few days here with us. Um, so please keep him in your prayers if you see this. Um, so yeah, my wife, uh, who is the best cook I know on this earth, uh, we're gonna put some meat on them bones of his. <laughs> but yes, uh, our our friend is coming to join us. We're gonna have some wonderful sh uh, fellowship and also share fellowship with some of you. Praise the Lord! So there will be three of us here. <laughs> Four, if you can include Zena, our dog. But <laughs> anyway, um, I was talking with a brother yesterday, uh, yesterday morning, and this beloved brother, our friend, not the one who's coming up uh, to see us, but our our friend from Australia, our brother, had mentioned to me that um, he keeps seeing the number one forty-four everywhere. It's just something that caught his mind. It's like, I keep seeing 144, 144, 144. And he shared this with me. And I'm like, okay, I read it down, wrote it down. And, and then at first it's like, well, we'll add them together and let's see what comes up. And then we were going through some things. And then the Lord put it upon me. Hey, guess what? The Lord about uh, Jan uh, July 25th, around there, gave me the notes for an expository video on Psalm 144. There ain't no coincidences. See. And the way the Lord works with me more often than not is He'll open something onto me in Scripture. And He and I will, will go through it. You know, go here, go here, go there. You know, that kind of stuff. And um, whether or not it become a video at present is totally up to the Lord and see what he did with this uh, this um, Psalm 144 video that we are about to engage in. Uh, he, he and I put it together on the 25th and then, well, I wrote down the 26th. That's when I thought I was going to do it, but it's like, no, set. Set. I don't do videos unless I know the Lord is behind it. I will not do a video unless I'm stirred to do so. I won't. I won't. I'll be, I mean, even the little nothing updates and stuff like that that I've done in the past. I won't make a move unless I know the Lord is uh, behind it. And when I've done videos and tried to upload them and the Lord has made sure to me, it's like, no, don't do this one. won't be uploaded. Or if I upload it for a minute, then I'll delete it. Um, that's the way it is. But uh, with my brother, our friend, telling us, uh, telling me about 144, and then just by coincidence got this uh, one uh, Psalm 144 expository video. Coincidence. So that is what we are going to be doing today. Okay. 
Um, I'm not going to check over my notes. We're just going to go through this as the Lord sees fit. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Um, as you, yeah, I'm using two sets of scriptures. That's easier for me to um, to do these things. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 144. Please follow me along. I expect you to. And I am going to address you as though you are following me along. Okay? All right. Psalm 144. Verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war, and my fingers to fight. Psalm 18, verses 27 on to verse 35. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leapt over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock, save our God? And then that is a lowercase r. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. How does he make your way perfect? By aligning your life uh, with the scriptures. That your life resembles the scriptures and that you live according to the teachings of scripture for us today, especially in this uh, dispensation of the time of the Gentiles. Okay? And his way is perfect. We are the ones that are fallible. His word is infallible. He maketh my feet like kin's feet, and setteth me up on high places. And he setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. And thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. See, at this time right now, brethren, we are to be out there. We are to be out there being witnesses, okay? Preaching the gospel, passing out tracts sharing what truthful information that we know about about what uh, about the psychological operation that the Jesuit order has instilled upon everybody okay we are to be out there we are to be uh, waging war we are we are we are and see right here in Psalm 18 especially and in Psalm 144 our strength comes from the Lord he will strengthen you. He will gird you with strength to go out there in whatever capacity it is that you are in to be a witness unto Him. Whether it's preaching, teaching, passing out tracts, just your everyday walk aligning with the Scriptures is a powerful witness unto these people. And this close to the catching away, hmm? And with the impending famine and the impending um, restrictions that are imminent, we need to be diligent. We need to be vigilant. We really do. We really, really do. We really, really do. John 15. John 15. Nobody goes out uh, uh, to warfare with, uh, at his own charges, remember. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody does. You're not alone. You're not alone. 
It's not a one man show. You go out there in your own power, like I'm going to do this, and not guided or led by the Lord, you're asking for trouble. John 15, verses 1, on to verse 7. Not Luke, you idiot. <laughs> John 15, verses 1, on to verse 7. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Remember what we just looked at in uh, Psalm 18? Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. There's a, there's a hymn out there that um, the uh, lyrics are The Lord Walks With Me. I can't offhand remember the hymn. Um, I think uh, Brother Sasha once did, uh, did that hymn. I think he did. I think he did. I'm not sure. But we of the Church of the Living God, as you know, we are sealed until the day of redemption. Our Lord is not going anywhere. He is with us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That, that's why we are in church 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The abiding is just this, abiding in Him. He's with us constantly. We are the ones that have to abide in Him. And when it comes to being a witness out there, especially in these times, you need to abide in Him. You don't just wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to go tracting, I'm going to go witnessing, I'm going to go do this, this, this. Those are good things. Amen. But is the Lord the one who is guiding you to do so? See, we are to do as our Lord guides. Abide in me and I in you. You don't take these things upon yourself. No. Because if you do, what happens? Something comes out of it? Something good? Bad or indifferent? Who gets the glory? Hmm? Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Nothing. Some might say, well, I, I'm out doing, you know, look at, the, uh, look at the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're out there, but then again, they're not saved, obviously. But they're out there doing a lot of stuff. Aren't they? Getting results. But number one, they are, they are of Satan. They're not saved. And number two, they're doing it on their own accord. In their own power. You and I as the church of the living God, you pray. If the, Lord, if, the Lord is, if the Lord is pushing you or calling you onto an endeavor, whatever it is, pray. Ask Him for His strength. Ask Him for His grace. Ask him for his guidance. You, you know this is to, to be taken literally, right? You know that, right? Let's continue. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. Remember how Paul talks about uh, wood, hay, stubble, precious stone, gold, and silver? Gold, uh, silver, precious stones are works at the judgment seat of Christ that will receive a reward, eternal reward, you know, eternal inheritance and stuff like that. Well, the wood, hay, and stubble works that get burned up at the judgment seat of Christ, not for salvation, but for our rewards in the kingdom of heaven in eternity. Wood, hay, and stubble are works that you do. Works that are profitable for nothing because they get burned. They burned up. But if they're of precious stones, gold, silver, 
from the Lord if any man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned if ye abide in me and my words abide in you note the ye plural and you signal okay ye plural shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you it comes down to obedience are you being obedient unto the scriptures hmm? are you now obedience as to salvation to be saved okay is not required Okay, meaning you don't have to do this, 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 and then comes salvation. No, no. The requirement is brokenness, contrition, and in fear of the Lord, you will call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, but after that, obedience, <laughs> you need to be obedient unto the scripture. But see, once you are saved, you can, unfortunately, as a church of the living God, live in disobedient life. You really can. But then again, your testimony will be shot. Your walk will be a disgrace. Your fruit will be rotten. And the Lord will probably take you home quickly. And be ashamed of you at the judgment seat. There is a high price that you pay for being docile, for being lukewarm as the church of the living God. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 under verse 6. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in present, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherein I think to be bold against some, which think of us, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, okay, our spirit and soul are housed in the flesh, you know, the skin suit, okay? Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We don't go to war at our own charges, okay? It's not a one-man show. You're not like Elijah, and Elijah himself wasn't alone. It's like, Lord, I, I, I alone am left. <laughs> no, you're not alone. You're not alone. What about those who pray for you? What about the prayers of the saints? Does that mean anything? Sure does. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal, carne, fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Remember in the book of Genesis how uh, the imaginations of man's heart are continually evil? That hasn't changed. If anything, if it has changed, it's changed for the worse thermodynamics everything gets worse with time not that satanic evolutionary religion that says things get better in time okay but casting down imaginations the evil imaginations of men the evil imaginations of men and the strongholds stubborn people who make their, uh, their idols out of their beliefs. Make themselves idols of the ones that they look at in the mirror.
and having a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, if you are of the church of the living God and you're not living according to the scriptures, the chastening upon you has got to be horrendous. But if you're not of the church of the living God but yet calling yourself a Christian and you're doing all these things in your own power or by the power of your father, the devil. Hmm? See, we as the church of the living God, again, we do not go to warfare at our own charges. It is the Lord who will lead you and guide you. And you need the Lord out there, brother, sister, especially today with all the resistance, with all the animosity, with the hatred, with the indifference. That, that, there are two uh, common strains that we, my wife and I run into. Hatred for the truth of God's word, the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Indifference. Indifference. Gray. Option C. A lot of indifference out there. A lot of indifference. Psalm 144, verse 2. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Second Corinthians chapter 5, one verse. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, he never sinned, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Imputed righteousness to the saved sinner. Imputed righteousness. Undeserved. Unmerited. Unwarranted. You got health problems, brother? Sister? You are reaping what you sow. Hi. But God is merciful. What is He? Our goodness. Our fortress. Our high tower. Our deliverer, our shield. I know it says my, but I'm putting it, I'm, it's personal. Is it personal to you? Hmm? Hmm? Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, Therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Again, today, right now, doing anything for the Lord in whatever capacity it is that He has called you on to. It begin, you go to the Lord. You seek the Lord. And ask Him to guide you in what He will have you to do. And if it is of the Lord, He will bring it to pass through you. He will bless His endeavors that He is using you for. Okay? And you can't separate those two and expect the Lord to be glorified. You can't do it on your own. You can do it on your own. But who gets the glory? Huh? Who gets the glory? You do. And what happens? Your pride. You get puffed up. You get full of yourself. 
God hates pride, remember. My goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust. It's good to be, uh, it is, it's good to be a little trembly, a little fearful when you're out there, on here, or doing whatever it is that the Lord has called you to do. It's good to have fear. It's good to be dependent on the Lord and not to your own wit and not to your own device. You need to be careful from whence you draw your strength. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Verses 17. On to verse 20. Contrast. A contrast from someone who is depending on the Lord, doing the work of the Lord, the Lord doing the work through that person, Spirit's own body, Contrast is one who is taking it upon himself or herself, who is doing it out of their own power. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. It's really interesting that someone who is operating in the sphere of flesh and not the spirit, um, you're always going to seem to have conflict with the doctrines. Why is that? Because the Word of God is contrary to the flesh. And the Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures, offends. Especially those who are living in their flesh, who are going to war at their own charges. Okay? Very contrary to them. And those of us who are not depending on ourselves, but trust in he who uh, raiseth the dead. When we get these chastisements, when we get these rebukes, we are thankful for them. Praise the Lord for them. Because they keep us humble. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Belly. Flesh. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Every single one of these easy believism heretics with your big smile. Good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Give me someone who is cracked, out of tune, bumbling, stumbling, mumbling, rather than some refined, polished. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I really have a big distrust for someone who is a preacher and is so eloquent, so perfect in delivery, so perfect, never makes a mistake, never stumbles or mumbles or mispronounces or makes an oopsie. I don't trust someone like that. I don't trust someone like that. That's why I never trusted Ken Helvin, you know. But then again, he's, he's a Jesuit to begin with, okay, before he was exposed as being a Jesuit. But, um, you know, you, you listen to him, deliveries were perfect no no mumbling no stumbling no nothing he's an actor reading a script prepared by his masters the Jesuits okay but there again like I said give me someone who's uh, give me someone who is fallible not someone who's uh, giving off this uh, procession uh, this um, image this persona this facade that they are perfect Aware of those types of people. Aware of those types of people. You don't make mistakes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. There's that thing about obedience again. And 
when the Lord saves you, the obedience is not to stay saved or anything like that. No, no. <laughs> the Lord gives us the scriptures. He doesn't, he doesn't save you to leave you there uh, like a ship without a rudder or anything like that. No, he will guide you through the scriptures. Okay? You're not supposed to be guided by your feelings. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. No, no. And you know what? Your obedience unto the scriptures, living your life according to the scriptures, will yield fruit and rewards down here and also from the Lord. But if you're doing these just for the sake of the rewards, do you truly love the one who saved you? Are you looking at the blessing rather than the blessor? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. For your, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. It's black and white. Okay? It's black and white. What God says is good. Anything that goes against the scriptures is evil. Okay? It's not that difficult. It's black and white. It's day and night. There's no gray. It's either right or it's wrong. There is no gray area. Where are we? Where are we? Okay. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Who subdueth my people under me. Verse 3. Lord, in Psalm 144. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Or the son of man that thou makest account of him? 1st Timothy chapter 1 1st Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 on to verse 16 I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus this is a faithful saying worthy of all expectation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom all are chief ah of whom I am chief Personal accountability again. Personal accountability unto the Lord will result in dependence upon Him. Knowing that you are not good. There is no strength in you. You can't do anything of eternal value for Him outside of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a faithful saying, uh, and worthy of all acceptation. And Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. You see, these easy believism devils, they may say that, but you talk to them, you talk to them, you don't even have to press most of these easy believism devils. You talk to them, they will make themselves of the number. They will speak. They will always. They might say at first, oh yeah, I'm a sinner. Keep talking with them. It comes out. They make themselves of the number. We're all sinners. And that is true. But see, there's no personal accountability. There is no I am the man. It's not personal. They make themselves of the general. Which means, oh, I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as so and so every single time with these easy believism heretics. It comes out. It oozes out. Their arrogance, their pride in that they just believe comes out. 
Let me look at him. Make a big smile. Look at him. Think you, you, you play off that you're so humble? You're full of dung. <laughs> Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering, not patience, long suffering, there's a difference, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul is right there saying, I'm the example that the Lord had. I the Lord made me an example. The Lord made of him an example for us. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Paul right there saying, Hey, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. How does your life look in comparison to Paul? Now granted, granted, okay, Paul went through stuff that you and I probably, well, well you never know, but Paul went through a lot of stuff that you and I never will. But the fact that he bare in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus, his constant care for the churches, the, the people, not the buildings. You get it? Romans chapter 7. You know, you, you misguided, misguided, and also wicked devils who preach this lunacy of, e of um, sinless perfection. Okay? That once the Lord saves you, you don't sin anymore. A babe could fall for that at first. They could. A babe, someone who's just recently saved, you get some nincompoop like great comfort. You know, what about holiness? When he talks about holiness, he's... Uh, equating that to sinless perfection. Okay? A babe could run into that and actually fall for it and it will destroy them. Okay? R read Romans chapter 6 about that whole thing. But, you know, you, you, you devils who say that you're supposed to, you don't sin anymore once you are truly saved and if you sin, uh, you're not truly saved. Number one, you're calling God a liar. That's a sin. Okay? Number one, okay? That, that's it. <laughs> Actually, you say you don't sin anymore, you're a liar. You've already sinned. So go take a long walk off of a short pier. Okay? But, Romans chapter 7, verse 15, on to the close of the chapter. Uh, let's include verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Uh, look at verse 3 again in Psalm 144. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Verse 15 in Romans 7. For that which I do I allow not. He's against sin. For what I would that I do not walking perfectly sinless. He couldn't do it. But what I hate, sin, that do I. The greatest of the church of the living God. Right there. He struggled with sin. Guess what? You sinless perfection devils, liars, Paul sinned. Paul's sin was pride. That's why he was given a thorn in the flesh. That was his sin. Of that is clear in Scripture anyway. I'm sure there were other sins that Paul committed. Just like uh, you Catholics, your uh, Pope Peter, he sinned too. And within Scripture, quite a few times. <gasps> oh yeah, that gets you going, doesn't it, you Catholics? Yeah. Yeah, your Pope Peter uh, sinned. Yeah. And he was rebuked by Paul because he sinned. He dissembled. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, Pope Peter of you Catholics is, uh, what is it, Jupiter, I believe it is? The uh, pagan deity Jupiter, I believe? One of you can correct me on that in the uh, comments section. I, I usually get, uh, forget who um, their Pope Peter is equated to with the demigods. I think it's Jupiter, but I'm not sure. Anyway, let's continue. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin dwelleth in me. You say, well how is that possible? We have the Holy Ghost in us. How is it uh, that it's no more Him, but sin that dwelleth in me? Look, look right over to Romans chapter 8, okay? Verses 1 under verse 4. There is, now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And Catholics walk after the flesh. Okay? That's why these closet Catholics take offense to certain things uh, such as the term skin suit. Okay? They're Catholic. They're Catholic. Okay? They're Catholic. When our Lord himself said the, the flesh profiteth nothing. Okay? They're Catholic. That's why they got so up in arms over that. But, uh, not getting off track, verse 17 in Romans 7, but sin that dwelleth in me? Okay? Remember, your spirit and soul are still housed in the skin suit, okay? The flesh, okay? Remember that, okay? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit, not doing things according to your own dictates. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Here's the, here's the explanation right here. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Yes, sinful flesh. Yes, the, the flesh of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, was sinful. <gasps> yes, it was. He even said that himself. And it's being reiterated here. Get over it, you Catholics. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. See, your spirit and soul are in the flesh, in the skin suit. Hence, verse 17 in Romans 7. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Where is sin? In the flesh. It's condemned in the flesh. Okay? You can sin in thought. You can have sin in your heart. But sin has been condemned. Where? And for sin condemns sin in. In the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay? Okay? Continue it in uh, Romans chapter 7. Verse 18. And then, and then, look at verse 18 in Romans 7. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Okay? You sinless perfection devils. You Catholics that worship the wafer God. Yeah. Yeah. Took me a while, but the Lord exposed that to me about why y'all were so adamant about that. You're Catholics. Imagine that. Verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Because sin is in the flesh. Okay? Again, yes, you can have a sinful thought. Thoughts can be sin. You can regard sin in your heart. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But remember, your spirit and soul are in here. And you as the church of the living God, when you die, the body dies. Your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, for the good that I would, I do not. Living sinless. You can't do it. 
down here. It's impossible. It's impossible. And you say that you don't sin anymore, you lie and your breath stinks. But the evil which I would, that I do. It's not that, it's not like you, well, I'm going to sin, I might as well just give, no, no, that's what Romans chapter 6 is about. Okay? But you have to understand. And the, you babes who have run into the likes of that rate comfort, stay away from that guy. That guy's dangerous. Okay? He's a sinless perfectionist. Okay? Stay away from him and the likes of him. Okay? But see, you babes out there, you're going to sin. It's a process of sanctification, of mortification. You run into some twit like Ray Comfort and you're a babe, what happens? You commit a sin and you think that you've lost your salvation, that you were never saved, right? Careful. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And where does sin dwell within us? Uh-huh. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. I like to equate that onto the law of thermodynamics. Simply because things get worse with time. Contrary to the religion of evolution that it gets better. No, it gets worse. Sin goes lower, 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 and lower. Lower, and lower still. And that war between the spirit and the flesh we have to we have to be we have to abide in the Lord we have to abide in the Lord because as time goes on sins get worse and the consequences of uh, those sins especially to us of the church of the living God we ain't uh, now let me put this out here again uh, you're saved born again of the church of the living God you're once saved, always saved. You cannot lose your salvation because it's not your salvation to lose. It is the gift of God. Okay? It is the gift of God. It's not your salvation. You sin, you're not going to lose what the Lord gave you. It's impossible. Or else God's a liar. And see, these easy believers and devils, they want you to go into time of Jacob's trouble and take the mark and damn you to hell. Okay? But when you are saved, born again, converted, you know, sealed, nothing's going to separate you from the love of God as his child, as his son or daughter. Okay? You're not going to lose his salvation. But you're going to pay a heavy price for it. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? Remember that. And right here, O oh, wretched man that I am, sinner who is chief. Personal. Personal. Not adding yourself to the number. Hiding yourself. But then again, you're not hiding yourself when confronted lovingly on it. Because what happens? You easy believers and devils, what happens? huh? You're better than so and so. Get around to it. It always comes out with you guys. Well, I don't do this. I don't do that. No, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get over yourselves. Get over yourselves. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. The flesh, the law of sin. The mind, the law of God. Being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay? Okay? And while we were at Romans 8, let's look at 8, 
Uh, Romans 8, chap uh, chapter 8, verses 34 on to verse 39. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, once you're saved, you're saved. Okay? A sin that you commit is not going to make you lose his salvation. It's not going to happen. But you are going to pay a horrific price for it. A horrific price for it. Verse 4 in Psalm 104. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. What is your life? It is but a vapor. Touched on this yesterday. Psalm 62. Psalm 62. <laughs> Life is short, brethren. Why are you messing around with those sins? What you waiting for? Here, you want a written invitation? Psalm 62, verses 9 on to verse 12. Ooh, ooh, I love this. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. Here today, gone tomorrow, those of low degree. Men of high degree, I don't sin anymore. I'm saved by my, uh, my belief, are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. And vanity is nothingness. To be lighter than vanity? Oh boy. Oh boy. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Like those who, call them, who I know call themselves Christians, the first thing they're going to boast to you is about, oh, I'm a millionaire. Shut up. Your money perish with thee. God has spoken. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. That power belongeth unto God. That power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. And that has not changed. We as the church of the living God, once saved, always saved, if you are truly saved, born again, and converted. Okay? The judgment seat of Christ. For our rewards in heaven. Okay? Our rewards. That's our works that are going to be tried. At the great white throne of judgment. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are going to really have to live it during the time of Jacob's trouble. You're all going to have to really live it. Yeah. Yeah. God, for also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. You reap what you sow. Whether good, whether evil, you're going to reap what you sow. Again, there is no gray area. It's either or. Black or white. You reap what you reap what you sow. Be careful what you're sowing and how you're sowing. 
especially when it comes to your body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost, okay? And anyone who defiled the temple, okay? Because the flesh is sinful, but the Lord living in you makes you separate than that, okay? That doesn't mean that your flesh is perfect. No, it just means that you belong to the Lord. Your flesh down here is never going to be perfect, you wicked devil Catholics. Never. Good luck. Oh, wait, you know what? I take that back. Yeah, when it's in the ground rotting and returning to the dust from whence it came, then maybe. All right. Verse 5 in Psalm 144. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Remember that uh, if you had seen that documentary about the real Mount Sinai? Go to Exodus chapter 19. Jabal el Laws is the actual Mount Sinai. Jabal el Laws. If I can remember, I'll put the, the link in the uh, description box. Okay? But Jabal el Laws, that's the actual Mount Sinai. Okay, not the one that was told you by the Catholics that has a Roman Catholic monastery at the bottom of it. <laughs> uh, you, you see the wickedness of the Catholics, the Jesuit order. Do you see? Yea, hath God said, Satan's church and his army at work. Exodus 19, verses 16 under verse 22. Very interesting. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of a trumpet exceeding, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And if you watch that documentary, granite was heated to the point to become like glass. Granite heated into glass. It's pretty hot. And Jabal el Laws, if you watch the documentary, okay, Jabal el Laws, the very top of it is all burnt black. That's the real Mount Sinai. Not the one that the Catholics told you. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, and, a mount, eh, and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord. To gaze and many of them perish. And he was just calling Moses to go up there. Okay? But see, looking at verse 5 again, bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Jabal El Laws today is the real Mount Sinai. Do not forget that. Psalm 113. And also you could uh, equate. Um, verse 5 with the second coming of our Lord. I didn't write that down in the, uh, for my notes. But you can equate that. You could kind of equate that uh, into the second coming. But clearly in Exodus chapter 19 yeah talking about the real Mount Sinai Psalm 113 Psalm 113. 
Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. For there is only one name given among men under heaven by where we must be saved. Jesus Christ. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth? God the Father was born as a man. Our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. One God, spirit, soul, and body. He humbled himself. God, the Father, in flesh. Ooh, wow. Yeah. The creator of everything. Sweating. Stinking feet. Bad breath. Arm, arm odor. Going to the bathroom. Getting hungry. As a child, maybe he had pimples. Yeah. Yeah. And see, these Trinitarians look at that. It's like, well, I know Jesus Christ was humble. Who do you think Jesus Christ is? He's the second person of the Trinity. <laughs> Satanic blasphemy. No. That was God the Father who died on that cross. It was God the Father who was on that cross. The flesh died. The flesh died. Okay? Jesus Christ is God the Father. It was the Father that went to the cross. God will provide himself a lamb. It was the flesh that died on the cross. It was the flesh. And our Lord, Jesus Christ, God our Father, went down into Abraham's bosom. Come on up. The way is open now because I paid the, uh, the price for sin. So it was the Father who died on the cross. See? Not the second person of a satanic trinity. One God, spirit, soul, and body. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. And is not Israel meaning prince with God? He sets us Gentiles with uh, his people Israel, grafted into their tree to make them jealous, to bring them on to their God. Easy believism and a true Jew I shudder to think of it. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. John 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 14. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, it's God who saves you. By grace, through faith. You say you're saved just because you believe. You're doing it yourself. You're a thief. You're a robber. You're climbing up some other way. Okay? It's not by the will of your flesh. It's God who saves by grace through faith. It's not faith alone. 
Okay? And the Word, our Lord Jesus Christ, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Came unto his own, and his own received him not. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Remember, he's coming back at his second coming. That comes after we be redeemed, the church of the living God, and the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But go now to... Go now to... Romans. Uh, we already covered that. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. We already covered that. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Made under the law. The law was still binding when Jesus Christ, God our Father, was walking around on the earth, even in his ministry. That's where I disagree with Brother Brian. Um, uh, that's where I disagree with him on that, about the fourth dispensation. I, I disagree with him on that quite heavily. Uh, it says made under the law. The law was still in effect while Jesus Christ was there. Okay? Verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. See, God had to pay the price for sin himself. You know, God will, um, God will, oh, I just said it too. God will make himself a lamb. For a burnt offering for sin. What is that? That's Genesis chapter 22. I just said it too. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Genesis chapter 22. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Genesis chapter 22 verse 8. Instead of messing it up. Yes. Genesis chapter 22 verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Okay? Sorry about that. Now verse 6 in Psalm 144. Cast forth, thy, cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Psalm 18 again. See how we did that? Psalm 18 once again. You're going to notice, by the way, that we're, we are going to reference Psalm 18 a few times in this video. Psalm 18, verses 3, on to verse 14. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. Tie that to uh, Mount Sinai, or perhaps his second coming. 
And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomforted, discomforted them. Okay. It says uh, in the scriptures, if the wicked do not turn from his ways, I'm, I'm bradizing this, that he will wet his sword. God is angry at the wicked every day. God is angry at the wicked every day. Verse 7 in Psalm 144. Send thine hand from above, rid me, and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children. Now strange children, strange children, not of Israel. In context, doctrinally right there. Strange children, those who are not of the church of the living God for our instruction in righteousness. Okay. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 verses 1 on to verse 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. What is that? What does he say? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And in verse 1, to proclaim liberty to the captives. You're not saved. You're held captive by Satan and the world. You're held captive to your sins. And you're going to die in your sins unless you come unto the Lord Jesus Christ. On his terms, by the way, Acts chapter 26. Strange children. Acts chapter 26. Verses 14 on to verse 18. And when uh, this is um, Paul giving a rundown. Uh, about how the Lord appeared to him, how he saw the Lord, okay? And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou? It is hard for thee to kick against pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things. which uh, Both of these things which thou hast seen. And of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles. Unto whom now I send thee. To open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And remember that Paul is our example. 
He was set so as a pattern for those who would uh, who hereafter would believe on him. Paul is our example to the Jew first and also to the Gentile because he is the uh, apostle of the Gentiles. But you read the book of Acts. What did Paul do? He went to the Jew first and then to us. But he is our apostle, the apostle of the Gentile. But what was revealed unto him is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? 1 John 2, strange children. Of course we had to come here talking about strange children. In context in Psalm 144, he's talking about those who are not Jewish, Hebraic, Israel. For our instruction in righteousness, strange children. 1 John 2 verses 15 on to verse 20. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And you easy believers and heretics, you love the world. Those of you who are uh, call yourselves Christians, boast about your money, and believe that it's a good thing, the Christian duty, because you love other people, to get in line with the steel of the Jesuit punyard, and go to church buildings, and you're a pastor at a church building too. Oh, and the, and the King James, that's the best translation. The Lord rebuke you. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't have both. You can't. You've noticed this theme that the Lord has set me on recently? Yeah. You can't have both. You can't have this and also have the things of the Lord. The Lord will give things to you that are needful for this, yes, but you need to seek Him first. You have to put Him first in all things. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Isn't it amazing about how quickly lust goes away once you fulfill it? And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. Isn't that interesting? Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that, not thee, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there, there even now are there many Antichrists. Yeah, and I can name a whole lot of you. Whereby we know that it is the last time. This is the falling away that Paul spake about. I am wholeheartedly, 110% convinced. Those of the church of the living God, yes, they can get messed up in sins. That's what First and Second Corinthians is about. Yes. But the falling away that Paul spake about in uh, First Thessal uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, I am totally persuaded. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye, Church of the Living God, have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And ye have an unction from the Holy One. What is that? The Holy Ghost, that seal until the day of redemption, and the Lord is that Spirit. Verse 8 in Psalm 144. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Now, that's going to appear twice. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Oops. You know, with their mouth they shew much love, but their hearts are far from Him, even though they fall back on, well, God knows my heart. <laughs> yeah, He sure does, you devil. He sure. 
Come on, Romans chapter 3. <laughs> Romans chapter 3. Verse 8 again in Psalm 144. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Oh, no, but remember, you're better than so-and-so. Get over yourself. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used to see. The poison of asps is under their lips. Every single one of these easy believism devils. That's you. Oh, your facade is good. You're so soft. You're so meek. You're so humble. You're so happy. So smiley. Verse 14. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. How can you know true peace if you want people to be have peace in their sins, you devils? There is, and this sums it up, there is no fear of God before their eyes. You easy believism devils, not one of you. Of course not. How can you? You don't fear God. You can go ahead and say that you do all day. It shows in your conduct. You don't fear God. All right, where, where are we, okay? Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Deutero, second. Ano me. <laughs> Deuteronomy. The giving of the the second giving of the law. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 29 on to verse 33. Oh, that they were wise. Wise. Fearing the Lord. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Wisdom is equated unto the fear of the Lord. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Oh, but on your deathbed, you've rejected the Lord all your life, and you're just going to do whatever, and then He's going to save you. Ha! 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 Is that possible? Yes. It, brethren, if we say that is not possible, who, who are you limiting? Seriously. Yes, that is possible. Is it probable? No. Is it possible? Yes. But you think about this. Someone who has been a Christian for 25 years and is totally lost, the devil, and has done everything contrary to Christ and has attacked at every whim the church of the living God on your deathbed, you think? Not going to happen, buddy. Not going to happen. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their capital R Rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. For their rock, lowercase, is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Look at that verse. Their rock, easy believism heretics, lowercase r, is not as our rock. Capital, a, capital uh, case r, the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't serve the true God of the scriptures. They serve their father, the devil, people. Okay? And how do you know? Even our enemies, the ones whose rock is not our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. And keep smiling. 
Gonna be smiling all the way to hell, buddy. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom. And you read about what Sodom was all about? Perversion? Fleshly perversion? And the fields of Gomorrah, which went up like an instant, as they will be taken out in an instant and burned for eternity. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine <laughs> is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. That's interesting, isn't it? Because the Catholic with their flesh god, the Eucharist, and that cup of wine, uh, their wine is the poison of dragons. And the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, the wine, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Could that be making a reference, perhaps, onto the chalice of the Catholic with their pucarist flesh cooking? <laughs> verse 9 verse 9 in Psalm 144 I will sing a new song unto thee if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become getting ahead of myself <laughs> I will sing a new song unto thee O God Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. Now that's referring on to a psaltery uh, or whatnot, but an instrument of ten strings? They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Remember, upon our Lord saving us, we are called on to good works. Not to save ourselves or to stay saved. No. But God has called us on to good works after he has saved us and sealed us. But, I, I kind of, of course, of course, of course, you know, singing a new song. I, I got that verse memorized, but we're going to go there. We're going to go there. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Can't get away from it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 11 on to verse 21. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Hold your place here. Here's an impromptu mo moment, but uh, John chapter 3. John chapter 3, 18 on to verse 21. John 3, 18 on to verse 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. You speak with lost people about scripture, they hate it. These professing Christians who are not of the church of the living God, you talk to them about you talk strong meat with one of these people, they get fidgety, they get offended. They tell you that your compass needs to be reconfigured. 
For everyone that doeth evil hate the light, hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now remember, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. But the true light that lighteth every man's eyes, that giveth life unto everyone, is um, uh, John chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 9. The same came for a witness to bear, the same came for a witness, talking about John, to bear witness of the capital L light, our Lord Jesus Christ, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, meaning of John, referring on the capital L light, our Lord Jesus Christ, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L light. That was the true light, capital L, that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You're not alive unless the Lord gives you, allows you to live. You're not here by accident. You have life. That light in your eyes is from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has given you life. Whether you want to accept that or not, you devil uh, religion, uh, evolutionary religionists, you're alive because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, that irritates you, don't you? Because you are your own God. You are your own idol. Hmm, just like your father, the devil. And if you're saying you are your own God, you are serving your father, the devil. It's just that simple. Ephesians chapter 5 again. Uh, where do I, We'll read again verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest his light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, fearing the Lord. And the fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking, I will sing unto the, I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery, and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. Verse nineteen, Ephesians five, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. To the Lord. You're not going to do that with CCM. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We are to fear the Lord especially in this dispensation. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Now, verse 10 in Psalm 144. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Jonah. Jonah. My man Jonah. Jonah. I like Jonah. Jonah. Chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. And thou heardest my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. There are those who say that Jonah died and went to hell. But when you read the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man cried out to Abraham for mercy and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't know. 
I, I don't I don't know if uh, Jonah actually died and went to hell. Um, being in the in the belly of a fish, how suffocating, how claustrophobic that must have been. All those uh, uh. But I don't know. I leave that up to uh, debate among not debate uh, uh, conversation among brethren. I will leave that open to conversation, not debate, among brethren. Okay? For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods can pass me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters can pass me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me up round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought my up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. So see verse 6 could tie into him, him uh, very well dying and going to hell. Like I said, I, I leave that open for discussion among the brethren. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. What's a lying vanity? Just believe. What's another lying vanity? I don't sin anymore. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of those who, who take it upon themselves and believe. Salvation is of the Lord. Not you, hot shot. And the Lord spake unto the fish. And it... Bleh, <laughs> vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Verses 16 on to verse 18. Not Titus. Excuse me. Second Timothy chapter four, verses sixteen, on to verse eighteen. Hmm. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it might not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. What, uh, what, uh, verse 10. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Our Lord will deliver us. Look at what he did for Jonah. Paul. Verse 18 in 2 Timothy 4. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He is our shield, our buckler. In him we trust. The Lord will deliver you out of the evil works that they do. And if he doesn't, you're going home to glory. He has a purpose. You're not going to get away from the consequences of your actions. But when these devils attack you, and whatever it is we're going to face, you have to trust him. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. He will deliver you. You, you do believe that, right? Verse 11. Rid me. And deliver me from the hand of strange children. 
whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That appears twice in the psalm. That means it's very significant. Psalm 18 again. See how we did that? Psalm 18. I considered once doing an expository video on Psalm 18. I did. Not him. Not our Lord. <laughs> Psalm 18. Verses 16 on to verse 21. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. Many waters. Remember, in Scripture, especially, I'm saying this again, in Revelation 17, waters are likened unto people. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. Fake, you know, fake people of the Church of the Living God. They're Christians. They're not of the Church of the Living God. From these coadjutor devils. From these mindless, walking dead zombies. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands has, hath he recon recompensed with an S me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. Now, this talks to the dispensational difference, because under the law, it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay? But today, we have eternal security. But still binding, he's going to reward you to, according to your works. You will reap what you sow, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay? You're going to suffer your consequences. I hope they're good. Okay? Now, Psalm 58. This, this one is very meat. This one is very meat. And this one, Psalm 58, for you, all my personal enemies, and all you enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rid me. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Oh, Psalm 58, if I didn't say that. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. You, you can compare yourself to earthly things. You're carnal, fleshly, sensual, devilish. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God hath created. That old serpent, the devil, Satan. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. God's righteous judgment. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lion, O Lord. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be cut, let them be as cut in pieces. As a snail which melteth, escargot, very good. Let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. We are not to rejoice that so-and-so got his. No. We are to rejoice in the fact that God is righteous and just. 
We are admonished, you know. Uh, I didn't uh, bring a snare upon my soul by wishing a curse upon your enemies, um, upon my enemies. Okay? Um, I will, uh, uh, be not glad when your enemy stumbleth, lest it displease the Lord, and he turn away his wrath from him. Okay? See, that's what the enemies of us do to us, brethren. If we fall, if we have problems, they're glad. They're happy. You know, I'm, I'm quite positive that my enemies who found out that I have heart problems, I'm sure they're clapping and hoping that I die. I know they are. It's unnerving, but that's how they are. That's how they are. They hope for our death. We... When we see bad things, right, uh, bad things come on to the evil, to the wicked, we cannot, and I've, I'm guilty of this too, but the Lord rebuked me and chased me heavily on it. We cannot be like them, but rather the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance that God is just, that God is fair, equal. He will recompense. He will repay. We praise the Lord that His judgment is righteous, fair, just, right. So when His vengeance fall upon the enemy, beg your pardon, we don't be like, yay, yay, that you fell, my dear friend from England, yay, no. No. Unlike you, I'm not like that. But God's judgment is just. And I praise Him for His just judgments. So that a man shall say, Verily, verse 11, There is a reward for the righteous. Verily, He is a God that judgeth in the earth. And if there is a reward for the righteous, Now, verses 13 and 14. I, I found this was meat. Okay? I found this was meat. Verses 13 and 14 in Psalm 144. That our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Again, in the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. It's going to be an agricultural farming society. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verses 1. Under verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now we have to remember. This is being said unto a nation. Okay. This is being said unto a nation. Not to an individual man. This is all conditional. Because in the Old Testament. Under the law. It was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay. I've covered that many a time. Okay. But keep in mind the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be all works. Keep that in mind. Okay? And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Clearly, this is written specifically for the Jew, Israel. The Hebrews and this pertains unto Israel okay all right this is for the Jew to the Jew under the law okay our instruction in righteousness absolutely but also too, like I said keep in mind what is being said here with also in regards to the kingdom of heaven which is going to be all works predicated on your obedience because it says in the, I believe it's in the Sermon on the Mount. If you don't forgive people, you won't be forgiven. So it's dependent on what you do. Works. Verse 2. 
and all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. This for our instruction in righteousness holds sway simply because if you're out of fellowship with the Lord and living in sin as a church of the living God, what is he going to allow to come upon you that wouldn't if you were in proper fellowship with him? The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Remember, too, doctrinally, dispensationally, dispensationally, specifically for Israel the nation, for the Hebrews, for the Jews, instruction and in righteousness for us today, you need to mind how you're walking with the Lord. Future, the kingdom of heaven. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the on the to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Now, if you were to continue reading, keep this in mind about Deuteronomy chapter 28. First fifth, uh, 14 verses talk about the blessings. And all they had to do is do what he said. Doctrinally, dispensationally, not for us. Instruction and righteousness for us. We're not going to lose his salvation that he has given us. But our walk will be messed up. Our testimony, everything will be messed up. If we're out of fellowship with him. And he'll let things fall on us that he normally would not. Uh, you keep reading in Deuteronomy chapter um, 28 from 15, oh, all the way up to verse 68 is all talking about the dire consequences that comes upon disobedience. And look what happened to Israel. Look what has happened to you if you're of the church of the living God and you're out of fellowship. Look what's going to happen to those in the time of Jacob's trouble. Finally, verse 15. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Matthew chapter 11. 
Matthew chapter 11. Verses 4 on to verse 6. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shew John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Does Christ offend you? Hmm? You just believe, huh? Skipping over brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord that leads to you calling upon the name of the Lord, change his life, huh? Oh yeah, the Lord does offend you because he has standards that you don't want to live up to. So just believe, big smile. Remember, God knows your heart. <laughs> John 14. You know, I know a lot of you get it about easy believism, but you never know who's going to click on one of these videos. And uh, the easy believism devils are, whoa, whoa, wow, they're voluminous. Wow. I found that out. I mean, I always knew there, there were a ton of these devils out there, but, oh boy. There are a lot of them out there. There are a lot. I would say, um, of just professing Christians alone, of professing Christians, those who are not of the church of the living God, um, I would probably say about 70% of them are easy believism devils. While the other 30 equate for, um, you know, like Catholics and whatnot like that even though Catholicism is the main religion on earth right now but remember easy uh, easy believism is from Catholicism how so because easy believism is true works salvation you are saved by what you do and Catholicism clearly works salvation clearly you got to do XYZ this 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 it's obvious but see, easy believism, but it's more subtle because it's what you do, your belief, not his grace through your faith, but your simple belief. It's Catholic. But see, the ecumenical thing, bringing everybody under the headship of Rome to be ruled by the volition of one man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? Best way to damn people is to get them to just believe in fact not to be broken and contrite hmm. <laughs> there's the work of the Jesuits for you John chapter 14 verses 1 on to verse 14 happy is that people that is in such a case yea Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's an exclusive statement. If ye had known me, Ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, 
and it sufficeth us. <laughs> uh, because I, I, how, how, how can someone of the Church of the Living God, excluding the babe and the novice, okay, how can someone truly save? believe in a three-person trinity. Excluding the babe and the novice. If you're ignorant, you're ignorant. Okay? If you're ignorant, check out the playlist about Jesus as God the Father. Okay? If you're ignorant, that's fine. If you don't know better, that's fine. But, um, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the soul of the Godhead? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. One more stop. You ready for this? Brother, uh, like I told you, uh, the Lord gave this to me on the 25th of July, and then when we talked, you said about I keep seeing the number 144. Isaiah, chapter 40. This, uh, there are those out there who at uh, chapter 40 will call this Deutero Isaiah because the, it's like two contrast from what was being spoken specifically nonsense like I heard that there are two different graves in Israel for Samuel the prophet the judge and that it has been said but there are two uh, graves of Samuel in Israel and I've heard it said well that's first and second Samuel Thank you, Father. Comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. To whom much is given, much is required, with much wisdom uh, comes, uh, what is that in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18? For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Fear of the Lord, yes, causes grief. And the more you know of how you can not measure up to God, yeah, that increases sorrow. It really does. But praise the Lord for his mercy, for his grace is sufficient for thee. For his strength is made perfect in your weakness. Here's John uh, the Baptist. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and high hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Mountains, hills, Referencing unto people, uh, casting down, down strongholds and bringing down imaginations. Okay? 
and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord sh hath spoken it see at his second coming all flesh shall see it together when we get redeemed not everybody's going to see it but obviously but at the second coming all eyes are going to see him the voice said cry and he said what shall I cry all flesh is grass and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field the grass withereth the flower fadeth because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it surely the people is grass here today gone tomorrow boy your life is a vapor the grass withereth the flower fadeth but the word of our God shall stand forever O Zion that bringeth good tidings get thee up into the high mountain O Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings lift up thy voice with strength lift it up be not afraid say unto the cities of Judah behold your God our Lord Jesus Christ our Father King of the Jews Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Remember in Revelation chapter 22, Behold, my, and my reward is with me, talking about at his second coming. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. He's going to rule the nations with an rod of iron at his second coming. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Talking about the lamb, the two contrasts in the two verses. He came first as the lamb. He's coming the second time as the lion. That's why you red word Christians really have a big struggle with the red words in Revelation, don't you? Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the, with, the, with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord? That's capital S, by the way. Or being his counselor, hath taught him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love the Lord, you're doing this all wrong. But, oh, be careful, buddy. That's what the evolutionists do. With whom took he counsel? With who or who instructed him? And taught him the, in the path of judgment? And taught him knowledge? And shewed to him the way of understanding? Remember the, what, over 170 questions or something like that? That God asked Job? Who are you to question the Lord? You wicked evolutionary devils. Who are you? You're grass. You're nothing. <laughs> I love this verse. Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as small as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. We see this grand planet. Okay? It's that big to him. Okay? And Lebanon is not and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. Like that 200 million man army that is going to come up against our Lord and he's just going to be, just going to speak. Go away. And like that, 200 million men. They're nothing. These nations are kingdoms. Man's petty kingdoms, they ain't nothing. That's why 
kingdom of heaven. It's going to be so glorious because God himself, God our Father, who you're going to be able to see, um, is going to be ruling and reigning. To whom then will ye liken God, you evolutionist? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman? Now, note the, uh, con uh, the comparisons that are being made here. The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. Catholics? He is so, he that is so impervished, that he hath no oblation, that he hath no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are small. Yeah, they can get pretty big. But they're small. Infinitesimal. Okay? That stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain. And spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. We often have no concept of how big our God really is. That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as, take them away as stubble. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of justice. He will judge the world in righteousness. The wicked, he will judge them righteously. And we are to praise the Lord for his righteous judgments. To whom then will ye, will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal? Saith the Holy One. And see, a lot of you make man in your own image. You bring down God and make him like yourself. The second person of the Trinity, right? You devils. Remember, God is other. He went through in the flesh everything that you and I went through. But see, he never sinned. We're not God. We sin. Okay? Lift up your eyes on high. And behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Yeah, God created all this. The big boom, no. Evolution, no. God, in six days, created all this. Not over millions and millions and millions of years ago. Nonsense. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? Note that difference. Jacob. Who is Jacob? Israel. He was Jacob's supplanter and became Israel, prince with God and man. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Though judgment is not executed speedily upon the earth, therefore the hearts of the children of men are set in, set in them to do evil, but it will be well with them that fear God, that fear before Him. That's in Ecclesiastes. I kind of brad eyes that. Go oh, find it. All you falling for this, preaching this religion of the poison crown. Who also, the religion of the poison crown. The religion of evolution. The religion of, uh, of the easy believism heretic. Okay? You are your own God. 
They're all one. They're all one. They all stem from Catholicism. Satan. You believe in evolution? You evolved? You believe that? You're your own God to judge what is good and evil? Yeah. Verse 28. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding? Again, how can anyone who owns a used car believe in evolution? It's absurd. My what 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 my ancestor was a, a booger that came out of the water and evolved into an ape and then into us. You have to be educated by Jesuits to be that stupid. You really do. And you evolutionists call us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who created all this, you call us the childish ones. <laughs> Up to dosage, buddy. Yeah, keep smiling, man. He giveth power to the faint. Remember, you don't go out at your own devices, at your own charges. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. That is fall, right? Fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I closed uh, the other scriptures that I was using. Happy is that people that is in such a case, yea. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Amen. That's going to be it for this video, brethren. Um, I'm going to, now i got to try to, I'm going to upload this and uh, hopefully uh, get a little bit more things prepared for our visitor who's going to be coming. Um, and thank you brother for uh, thank the Lord that he mentioned that through you about the number 144 that's going to be the name of this video by the, by the way um, praise the Lord for you praise the Lord for all of you thank you all of you who have helped us through your prayers through your charity thank you the Lord reward and recompense every single one of you. May the Lord give you fruit abounding. And with some of you, may He give you a bountiful, literal harvest. <laughs> we are your servants. And thank you. Thank you, brother. We love you so much. My wife and I. Praise the Lord. For his mercy endureth forever. Hopefully this will help some of you. I hope. I pray. Thank you so much for all that you have done. Church of the living God. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us. Please remember to keep in your prayers the babes in Christ. Please continue to pray for your brothers and sisters in Australia. Please pray for a brother and a sister who just, it just seems that everything is going wrong for them all at once. A sister who um, has the possibility of losing her eyesight. 
who are our friends and a brother who um, goes through suffering that you can't even possibly fathom. Pray for one another, brother. That's it for this video. We love you. We will see you in the next video. Lord willing.